The name is no longer Francesca. The name is now Friend Beard atop the Black Raven pirate ship. This event is happening for the next two hours right here at Jack's Chamber. We're having a good time. But yesterday, the crews found a shrimp they simply just couldn't toss back. Channel 4's Francesca Amaker spoke to fans as they walked out after seeing that long-awaited movie. She joins us with their reaction. That's right, Ken. I'm meeting a lot of fans. I'm meeting a lot of characters as well, including Yoda here. Judge me by my size, do you? Okay, look, Yoda, no one's judging you by your size. But a lot of the fans who are coming to this after party are definitely judging the premiere of the Star Wars, the movie, and they had some great things to say. <laughs> This isn't exactly a galaxy far, far away. But tonight for the movie premiere of Star Wars, The Force Awakens, it was close enough for fans to feel the force within them. I didn't know what to expect, and I think they did a great job putting it together. You've got music, you've got uh, libations, and there's a lot of cool people. Incredibly excited. I took off work tomorrow in preparation for the aftermath of all of it. At this local movie theater, Star Wars came alive. <laughs> As fans reenacted the cantina scene from the debut back in 1977 before hopping in line at Sunray Cinemas. The movie has already broken the record for most tickets sold on the popular movie ticketing website Fandango. And according to the droids, Han Solos, and Leia's who saw the movie for the first time tonight, that record will continue to soar. It's kind of shocking and kind of surprising. It's, it's amazing. I think people out there should go and see it. It was amazing. Uh, they really brought uh, a lot of new style of filmmaking to the old style of Star Wars with all the characters that we love and robots and there was all kinds of stuff happening. It was like, beep, beep, beep. It was so cool. I tried my best not to have any spoilers in this story for you. And they're going to be partying in this after party until midnight tonight. The second showing here at Sunray Cinemas was at 10 p.m. about 10 minutes ago. So I can't wait to speak to that batch of fans. We're now reporting live in Riverside. Francesca Emmerker, Channel 4. May the Force be with you. Of course, Francesca Amaker got in on the fun going on tonight at the Jack's Chamber, where dozens of fans came out to celebrate the roar of the Jags. Well, there are three things that made this kickoff pep rally a great time. Of course, there were cheerleaders, lots of good music, and lots of good food. I am wearing <laughs> Jaguar pants, Jaguar bag, Jaguar shirt, Jaguar hat, and I got my Jackson DeVille. <laughs> like most Jaguar fans, Lisa Branch is roaring with spirit from her head to her toes. Go Jaguars! Go Jaguars! Go Jaguars! She and her husband are small business owners who say they know the value of being supportive. Support that was felt by local food vendors. And even the players who took to the stage to show their appreciation to roaring fans. Coming out here and just knowing we have their support, it gives you a little bit more motivation to not only to do it for us, but to do it for the city. A city that's ready for the Jaguars to unleash the animal and feel the same energy and spirit that's in the hearts of all of their fans. And again, the first home game of the season is Sunday against the Panthers at 1 p.m. You will see those guys here, and of course the teammates, it's gonna be a great time. For now reporting, Francesca Amaker, Channel 4, the local station. It's the hottest item of 1565, and for some reason, I just couldn't seem to find it. I checked here and there, heck everywhere, until I ran across the brains behind the most talked about shirt in town. And it started with a tote bag that said party like it is um, 1565, and it just kind of morphed from that. Meet store owner Michelle Vagan. She sells handbags but wanted to add a unique twist to the big celebration. So she called up Flagler College junior Mary Jo. She's like, I need a design. I want to make bags. I was like, sure, let's do this. So the two poured their creative juices together, and Mary Jo drew it up, scanned it, and the rest was history, literally. 
20 shirts originally for friends transformed to 100 shirts that sold out immediately. I called up Jim at Freddo's and said, can we do more? And he said, I can get you 250. So Friday morning, we opened with 250 more t-shirts after our original 200. Uh, they sold out that night. Um, I called Jim that night and said, can we do this again? And he said, no, we don't have any more t-shirts. And that's when the entire family got involved helping purchase every white shirt they could find in the city. I was like, this is crazy. Seeing people walking around with my design on their shirt, which is something completely out of this world. I've never had that happen. Within three days, nearly 1,000 shirts were sold. We even caught these folks asking for the hot item. Yeah, we were partying like it was 1565, so we felt like we needed something to commemorate that. Right. But we ate the cake and we wanted to wear a t-shirt. I've had more locals walk in in this weekend than I probably have in the longest time. So it's just nice to be doing business with my community. Oh, and if you're wondering if I ever found the shirt, well, let's just say tonight, I'm partying like it's 1565. Ryan? Oh, that's right. You know, since Powerball launched in Florida back in 2009, there have been plenty of winners here, actually 10 to be exact. And the folks that I spoke to right here at St. Nicholas Sitco, they said they believe they could be number 11 tonight. It doesn't matter who you are. It seems like everyone is doing it, placing all of their luck on the record shattering $1.5 billion jackpot. It's like a four ticket I got today. Four one? Yeah. Buy them everywhere. I get them every side of town. What are you buying with that billion dollars? Probably my mama helps. Hello. And I'm moving back from Branson, Missouri. Wednesday evening, the St. Nicholas Food Mart was packed with customers. $1. Yeah. Garble, right? Yeah. This one is five thousand. Mm -hmm. Off a dollar game. This one is ten thousand. And the twenty thousand dollar we couldn't keep. He took it with him. So this is a pretty lucky store. It is. And that was my cue to jump in line. Good luck. This is it. That's the one. Wish me luck. The last drawing on January 9th marked the 19th drawing without a grand prize winner. So tonight, many longtime customers told tickets. me this drawing is theirs for the taking. And they already have big plans for the mega moolah. $1,000 a day for one year. That's $365,000 to total strangers. If I win, wow, it's so much money, I wouldn't know. Probably a new car. Well, thank you. I always wanted a Porsche. I'm just relying on a uh, blessing and luck. Good luck, Terry. <laughs> good luck to everyone who is playing Powerball tonight. All I can say is good luck. And, of course, Channel 4, we are your family and friends, so be sure to share the wealth. We're now reporting live for Just Gamerker, Channel 4, the local station. Big muscles, great legs, and fantastic tails. Oh, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the biggest catch at the 52nd Annual Shrimp Festival, where almost everyone was on a seafood diet. No, really, they saw food, and then they ate it. But what happens before the hot, steamy, crunchy goodness enters your mouth? Hey, I need a fish platter. For the Faith Christian Academy, a whole lot of preparation. There's a lot of details in all of this, and so we've just learned basically by failing forward. I have the shrimp and a uh, seafood. Failing is an understatement. This nonprofit tested the boiling waters when they first became vendors at the festival eight years ago. Now they're the top grossing food booth at the entire event. Think you can guess why? Everybody in here is invested. So invested that the shrimp is local and the workers make you feel like family. And my own family's here. My wife is here running the expediting line. And then my daughter's over here uh, taking orders and my son's here. And check out the curliest, swirliest order of them all. We've tried the tornado potato, something different uh, that people can say, where'd you get that? Or what is that? Mmm. Okay, let's get back to the shrimp. Just look at it. Now taste it. Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. Mm -hmm. Very good. Some of the best you've had? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's always the best at the seafood shrimp festival. It's safe to say that there wasn't one crabby person at this fun-filled festival. But let's just say when it came to tasting shrimp, almost everyone was shellfish. Francesca, she is on a pirate ship, Francesca. Fran, I can't wait to see what you're doing. 
That's right, mate. That's right, mate. Shiver me timbers. I'm shaking in my boots. I must be quick because they are trying to take over our ship and take our booty and our treasure. They're fighting for our lives, guys. We have just been under attack by another pirate ship. Right now, we're on the Black Raven. And just a few minutes ago, we went from singing, and now we are fighting for our lives aboard the ship. Now, coming up at 6.30, we're going to show you how we plan to defend against our booty, against our treasure. That's coming up at 6.30, mate. Arr! <laughs> defend the booty, Fran. Defend the booty. That's right. <laughs> Fran, did the Kings say anything about the highlights of their trip? Well, he certainly did, Mary. Tonight at dinner, the king told us that the biggest highlights, or one of the biggest highlights of the trip, was meeting our own royalty, President Barack Obama, and of course, the First Lady. He also said that he was extremely pleased to be finalizing his week-long trip here in America, right here in St. Augustine. The excitement has been high. Everyone in awe as the arrival of the King and Queen of Spain was the icing on the cake of St. Augustine's 450th birthday celebration. So many symbols of our common heritage and so many symbols that bring us uh, our own diversity into this country. As the King made his speech at the 20th Annual Forum of the U.S. and Spain Council, he highlighted the importance of the growing number of Spanish companies, entrepreneurs, and managers in the U.S. He says Spain plays a prominent role in many international missions, and he hopes forums like these help lawmakers, businessmen, and professors generate more international conversations and collaborations. This is our future. The Spanish language, Spanish culture, it's our future. And what I say to people, it may not be yours, but it is your children's and it is your grandchildren's. And I think we should embrace this. Now, the fun does continue with the U.S. and Spain Council tomorrow at World Golf Village, and we will be there to report in our reporting live in St. Augustine. Francesca Amaker, Channel 4, the local station. Now, Francesca, you were able to closely observe the king and queen as they visited with city leaders and with residents. What were your impressions of the royal couple? Yes, this is my first time in front of or in the same room of uh, someone who is royalty. Amazing experience. They are beautiful, sophisticated, very intelligent. And one thing that I took away from this event, aside from international affairs or the importance of international affairs, was a quote that they said when they said, the world, think of the world as a book. And if you haven't traveled, you've only read one page. So aside from the importance of international affairs, they highlighted the importance of traveling the world. So that was just pretty cool just to hear them say as well. The icing on the cake. As shrimpers with the Trout River Fish Company were getting shrimp out of the St. John's River, they stumbled upon something that was shrimply bigger than the rest. Channel 4's Francesca Amaker spoke with the <laughs> owner of the fishery and found this shrimp. Francesca, what do you, uh, what do you have in your hand there? <laughs> well, Ken, this is the brown shrimp, and this is what you normally find in the St. John's River right here. But yesterday, the crews found a shrimp they simply just couldn't toss back. That's where you usually find fish and lots of shrimp. But Thursday morning, the crew at Trout River Fish Company made a catch they've never seen in their six decades of operation. When you throw him on there, you'll see that big shrimp stand out. He was huge. He's huge. He's huge. A half a pound shrimp is a huge shrimp. You heard that right. Bruce says they caught this 12-inch shrimp in the St. John's River. That's the average size brown shrimp that is running right now off of Mayport. A little shrimpy compared to the rest, and the customers in awe agree. So when I saw that, that was like a lobster tail or something, and then my dad pointed it out that it was a shrimp. Many took pictures and even guessed how much it weighed. They're almost bigger than a lobster. Four pounds. The largest shrimp I've ever seen. Three pounds. Three pounds. They come out of North Santee in South Carolina. They were farm raising them there. And when Hurricane Hugo come through, that, that released the shrimp into the wild. Bruce says the tiger shrimp is an invasive species that feeds on the smaller shrimp. And though that may worry some shrimpers, Bruce says his family will have no worries Saturday night. Saturday night when we close, we're going to eat it. Bruce says he and his family just want to see how juicy that shrimp will be. I guess it's safe to say it must be hard out here for a shrimp. For now, reporting live from Chesky Amaker, Channel 4, the local station. I don't think she liked holding the shrimp. Uh, <laughs>